All right, so today's not the best day. We've had some pretty amazing days diving off the South Clin. Some fantastic bass, big pollock. Uh, we'll roll straight into the footage from the other days and hopefully enjoy it. North Wales is an absolutely superb area for spearfishing with bass. There's large numbers of them about and you can drop in pretty much anywhere and find bass. And if you're really stealthy, they'll approach you right onto the tip of your gun, giving you a mega easy shot. Now throughout most of last summer, I was diving on Patheli Marina with my friend Simon Byrne, who owns a boat down there. The marina is conveniently situated to hit all the marks on the South Lynn, although of course last summer it was quite expensive with fuel. But it's always great just getting out of the boat, cruising around, using the fish finder and looking for new marks. And one such mark was GoPro Point. Now the reason it's called GoPro Point is because back in 2021, I dropped my GoPro in there. It's still there now, we never found it. Now the mark itself is a series of gullies and channels. <laughs> this section here is about 12 meters deep and there's a pinnacle seen just to the left that rises to about six meters. Now, initially I was always dropping down to deeper sections looking at Pollock. Simon shot some pretty nice Pollock there. Um, I never had any big ones, my biggest was about 55. But I started seeing the bass just cruising very, very high in the water. So I thought, why don't I try on top of the pinnacle? Now this is the first drop on top of the pinnacle. Now the fish at GoPro, they're at very specific states of the tide. So this is about two hours before low water. And there's about an hour long period where there's a slack and they only appear at that slack time. Anything kind of other than that, you get the odd bass flying past on the current, as you'll see later on in the footage, but you don't really seem to get the big shoal like this. One of the main disadvantages of GoPro is the amount of boat traffic. Ideally, you want to hit it in the evening or early morning, but sometimes that tide window is pretty hard to get right, and the boats are you know, quite annoying. And you can see here, the old bass just kind of cruising around. This is at that slack point again. Now this clip, I probably should have shot one of those first two bass. They're quite large fish, about five or six pounds. You can tell by the darkness of the back. I mean, they're quite a good sized fish, but I was kind of waiting for a really big one and it never really materialized. I probably should have just dropped that fish right there. But I'll just wait here and I'm taking a you know, nice fish about 55 centimeters there. Yeah, pleasant fish. And again, quite a nice pollock there. You might recognise that pollock from one of my previous videos. I think I showed that in the introduction to the spearfishing for pollock off the Clint video. I love the way the bass just kind of melt out of the gloom. You see those silver fins just outlining them. They just kind of move past you so gracefully. They're an absolutely beautiful fish to hunt for. And of course, so nice to eat as well. Now often at GoPro I had a quick look in these holes for trigger fish. I never really did it properly, I should have taken the torch and had a look, but on occasion bass are just sort of fly past in the current and almost swimming straight onto the spear and sometimes you just think I might as well shoot it. But once the current gets up it's quite difficult to stay in position and it becomes almost a drift dive. So with Simon on the boat here, you can see he comes up, I grab the ladder and he tows me back into position for another drift. And once the current picks up, all these small pollocks suddenly start to appear. Not entirely sure why that is, but they're pretty much always there. And with all these small pollock around, it's important not to spook anything. Because if you spook it, then the bass won't come through the pollock shop, like this one does here. And again, you can see the current absolutely flying past here. And generally, once the current gets up like this, I was tending to find only quite small bass here. You see all these ones here look a bit undersized, so I'm just waiting and waiting and waiting for a point blank, easy shot, and then take an in-size fish there. It's not a particularly big fish, but it's in size. And the scenery in the South Lynn area is continually stunning. It's good the whole way through. I think it's one of the best places I've dived in the UK. There's huge numbers of fish and stunning scenery and no other divers. Now, there was a headland area that we targeted quite extensively as well. I'd had some nice fish there the previous year. 
and this headland drops down to about 13 meters to a gravel bed and there's very very dense kelp there it's quite a cool place to spear actually because of all the kelp i really enjoy it and you can see here just waiting for the biggest fish in the shoal and picking it off and this was a particularly nice fish here this is the one in the thumbnail of the video bit of a portland pose there but you know it's a pretty nice fish and at night, the fish, well it's not really night here, it's just evening, you know, about an hour before nightfall. Um, the fish almost seemed to go to sleep, I just picked this one off. And you can see Simon here, just around the headland, and he's looking to dive, comes up, and he's shot a nice bass. So both of us took some pretty good bass at that headland. Now once the current started running, in that headland, that's when the fish really start to turn up. So at GoPro, they seemed to like it when it was slack. At this headland, they seemed to like it when the current was really racing through. I'm not entirely sure why that is. It might be because GoPro has more structure to actually hold a shoal of fish. Whereas this headland, there is a bit of structure with all these boulders and gullets, but there's no one big piece of structure. You, know, you can see here the current's coming kind of pretty quickly. I'm just waiting for fish to swim onto the gun and frustratingly I shoot a, probably the smallest fish in the shell. Another clip here when the current's kind of going. I'm sat down here in this gully and it creates a slack that the pollock can shoal into so I'm hoping maybe a bigger bass will, will come through. But if you've watched my other videos this year you'll know I had a lot of problems with my safety catch later on in the year. As you can see here I try to shoot, nothing happens but fortunately I've got the breath holds to just kind of stay on the bottom and wait for another fish to come in and take it. Now having a bass on the gun line in a strong current like this certainly makes shooting a lot harder. I see two nice fish just swim past here but I've got no chance of tracking onto them. So I've almost got to wait for a bass to swim directly onto the gun as this one does here. And again here you can see the value of patience just waiting for a really easy shot that bass just turns broadside at point blank range and it'll be hard to miss. Now this is one of my favourite clips of the whole year. This bass just kind of melts out of the gloom. And I'm really working out, should I shoot one, should I not shoot one, they all spook. I'm just waiting and waiting and waiting, just the value of being that patient, lying on the bottom as still as you can, and then picking off this bass at quite long range actually. Very, very satisfied to get a good shot on this one. And then the final clip here, I see this bass in coming kind of above me, it was a really, really cool shot actually, you're seeing it silhouetted like that. It was quite a nice fish actually. I very rarely weigh or measure my fish, um, but you can see it here on the rocks. This is actually on a shore dive. It's quite a nice fish and a fitting way to finish. It was a really, really good season. Had a lot of bass and really explored a lot of new terrain around South Glynn. The next video is going to be about free diving in an abandoned slate quarry. We had some really, really cool dives, myself and a few of the other guys. Uh, really, really improved my diving. We'll make a little video about this, just kind of explaining what we did, the tips that Ivan showed here, he's a freediving instructor that he gave us, and everything that we all did to improve and beat our PBs.